you know what you need? I said the exact same thing. I was like, you need to get you some bud frame. You need to get you set up so you can pull the branches down. Let's get right to it. Our guests of honor tonight, you've seen them all over the internet. You've seen them at probably your local grow shop, which is exactly where I've seen them most recently. Uh, when I stopped by Metatron Homegrown when they had their big ribbon cut- cutting ceremony, congratulations, by the way, uh, I made sure that uh, I stopped in and they had a whole display of all Bud Trader gear, which you don't see unless you're going to go out and hit these stores. So make sure you go visit your local growth shop and support. They're making a killing right now with all of their products. You definitely, definitely need to check them out if you have not. Let's bring them in. Kurt and H of Bud Trainer live here on 2 Be Blood. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Can you hear me? There we go. Thanks for having us. <laughs> it's really weird how we have to set up. I'm not this is not just because I'm saying, but like, man, I feel like I'm up here. And then down here is Kurt. And then yeah. right at the bottom. <laughs> hey, do you think you could like tilt your camera so I'm not just looking at the top of your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. It looks like we got it. You're just short. That's all. Right. I know. I know. Just, life, right? There, you go. there we go. A little better. Bit there. That That's better. <laughs> still, still got an angle going. I mean, the other way, I guess. There we go. It, but it's all right. It's all right. It's right. We're, we're still, we're good. We're good. It still looks like uh, you might have a, a height problem. We're fine. You know, it won't be. Uh, you won't be have any problem getting higher. That's for sure. That's right. You know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> I just have to talk to you guys like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Congratulations, you guys have been killing it. It's a lot of success online recently. I see you all over YouTube, Instagram, and all the shows. What's that? What's that like for you guys? Thank you. Yeah, it's been super exciting over the last few years since we started Bud Trainer. The cannabis space is just growing so uh, rapidly everywhere, especially in North America. And it's just a blessing to be able to be a part of it. We started off with uh, something that we never imagined would get to this point because we never imagined the industry was going to go so quickly and succeed so much. So it's been super exciting. Sometimes it's just hard to keep up with everything and uh, it's truly a blessing. Well, I gotta say, here's my first question, right? So the one thing that always intrigues me about people is 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 their thought process when they decide they want to get into certain things right now getting into something like the bud trainer products like the you know the the bud pots the bud cups the bud clips you know you guys got the the garden wire and all this stuff like what made you decide like that's the route i want to take in the cannabis space yeah that's a great question it's uh one of those very niche areas that i myself when i started growing i got obsessed with which was plant training i just saw this picture of a plant train with massive colas and buds coming out it looked like the person was multiplying their plant and then i was like what is this and i looked into it my first grow or my first few grows were far from good but at least those plants they were always trained you know since the first time and one thing that i realized was that there wasn't much to address plant training there were a lot of lsd clips but they were uh, uh just too aggressive and too hard on cannabis plants and there were lots of pots that people would poke holes with their own scissors in and i decided to just create sort of like a set of products that would help people train their plants but just a bit more easily than uh what was available out there i i created the products for myself you know that's really how it started with my 3d printer and then um i quite liked it uh, other people quite liked it when we really just started uh, and made a business out of it and then things one thing led to another and uh, uh it just continued growing the the brand itself i think uh, uh landed well and we got very lucky because of that so you just saw someone doing a stress training once and you were like this this is the coolest thing this is what i need to do with my life Yeah, it was just like uh, when I saw that and I was like, how is it possible that a plant can turn into so many, uh, you know, heads and big colas? And that's really what I always wanted for my buds versus I'd see other plants that look like a Christmas tree. They flop around and they don't look great, you know. So um, I just, I guess, had time in my hands. It was actually the very first summer 
after legalization in Canada. So Canada legalized October 2018, but that's, you know, heading into the winter. So there was no growing outdoors that year in 2018. But 2019 was the first year you literally could grow outdoors. And my neighbor was growing a couple of plants and he had a couple of seedlings extra because here in Ontario, the limit is four plants per household. So I ended up taking a couple of uh, his extra seedlings and that's where it all started. The year after that, I then started my own seeds for the first time. Uh, didn't even know about, you know, things such as cannabis nutrients and so on at the time. I was just so naive. I would, I would be going to Home Depot asking for cannabis nutrients. And they tell me like, oh, just use the tomato stuff. I heard it works. I'm like, okay, then I'll, I'll go buy <laughs> tomato nutrients, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's, you know, tons of hydroponic stores around. And this has been an industry that's been around for so long. So it was just really that uh, uh, being naive at first and, and going through the difficulties of a home grower that uh, made me kind of fall in love with wanting to find out more about it. And that's really what took me to, I guess, you know, a uh, start butt trainer. It was kind of like a passion at first. And then I saw the problems that had with that and with the products that were out. And I was like, nah, people need to train their plants a bit more easier, a bit better. And that's how, kind of how it went off. Well, I remember back in the day, like, you know, uh, it was always the ingenuity of people and how they would achieve the stress training. You know what I mean? Like they would just use the most random stuff to try to bring the branches down. It was just, they weren't always reliable. And and it wasn't until recently that they actually have started having designated products for this stuff. And it just, it seems like it's almost like the new wave. Now, to me, if you ask me when I'm, when I see a plant and you, I think about bending those branches. That shit makes me fucking nervous. Like, I get scared even thinking about trying to do that because I'm not going to lie. I got two plants going outside right now, and they're both like Christmas trees. And I'm thinking of my wife because I got one for her for Mother's Day. It was one I cloned. I'm out of here. (laughs) I know, but wait, let me finish. Let me finish. And then she had cloned that plant. So now we had two going. And they're both kind of Christmas tree shaped. And I was like, you know what you need? And I said the exact same thing. I was like, we need to get you some bud trainer clips. We need to get you set up. So you could pull the branches down. Now, I would never be able to do that. I'm, I'm too, it makes me really nervous. The benefits of this are incredible, right? I mean, you could almost double your your output if you if you produce with the with the branches down because now you're getting all the side pieces instead of going out to come straight up. So now you have all these tops as opposed to side branches, correct? That's exactly it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what really led me to uh, pursue the plant training path forward was, um, after a couple of years of growing my own, you know, in the backyard, uh, COVID came and I decided to go back to school then, kind of like just make a, a shift in careers. And I took a, a program, a postgraduate program in commercial cannabis production. I really wanted to. Oh, that's grow. awesome. Yeah, Niagara College in, I mean, close to Niagara, right in Niagara Falls, really close to the U.S. here. There, They have the very first uh, program for commercial cannabis production. They basically teach you in a full-time program for a year how to grow cannabis at a very large scale, how to mix your own nutrients, how to uh, train your plants, and how to set your environment, how to control your light, uh, how to deal with every single pest you can imagine. So uh, as I was going through college, uh, the, the, the market for the large commercial producers was actually already kind of starting to come down. The industry was slowing down a little bit because it went very aggressive here in Canada at first. And that's when I really had the idea about butt training. It was during college. And the truth is most growers that grow commercially, like I'd say 95% of them, they will at least top their plants and do some form of training in the sense of doing defoliation and managing the branches so that they grow and get more light exposure as well as more airflow. That's the whole point of it. Uh, most of them use trellis nets to be able to, again, separate their colas more and support those buds. Yep. It comes back down to plant training too. The only difference is that a commercial grow, they can grow, you know, a thousand plants in a bench. They don't necessarily need to do as much plant training but when you're growing at home and you're limited to four plants like here in canada uh sometimes five six eight plants however many that happens to be and you're growing outdoors and you have a lot of space if you train your plants you're really maximizing all of that space you're getting more light exposure you're getting more airflow and ultimately you're getting more yields right so uh and and i really i grow a lot indoors as well and when you're growing indoors it makes a huge difference because the thing is with a plant that grows naturally in that Christmas tree shape, the 
top of the plant that gets closer to the light is going to collect most of that light. However, LED lights, they're really bad for losing their power as it goes down into the canopy. So right. the farther away you are from the light, you lose the power exponentially. Whereas the sun is too powerful. It's already millions of miles away. It's not going to make a difference from here to here. The, the, the power of the sun is the same from top to bottom because it's right. way too powerful, right? So uh, uh, when you have a tall a Christmas tree plant, at least it gets light all the way to the bottom. However, what you don't get is that canopy area that can be expanded when you train that plant, right? So what I figured was, well, if commercial growers are doing this, uh, there's definitely a benefit for the home grower to do this as well. And um, it was all about taking all of that knowledge, changing it up into a system that works well for home growing, where you get one plant and you just turn it into a monster plant and then getting the, the biggest deals ever. You know, it's uh, one of those things that once you do it i could never grow a cannabis plant again and not train it you know it's one really of those things. really see because i so i have a small tent. i got i got a four by two so my and when i got this tent my main concern was the fact that i would have to train the plants to not you know because they only grow one way really i mean the, with the two feet is not really that much width or death for that plant so you're kind of you know once i started thinking about bud training it's like wow if i really could take the branches and put them off to the sides like that I could probably inc increase my production tenfold compared to what I would get if I just left it straight up and down like that. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the crazy thing. You can really maximize your space using these. Yeah, Curtis is one who grew his first plants without training and then uh, switched to training, and that made a big difference. Oh, you're muted there, Kurt. Yeah, Kurt, you got to unmute yourself. There you go. Oh. I still can't hear you. <laughs> nope. Oh. We'll go now. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, no, I made a few mistakes when I first started growing. And I mean, back to your first question of how we got into this. By the time H was bringing me into the loop, all I wanted to do is learn how to grow weed like him. That was as long as I could figure that out over uh, the course of joining Bud Trainer, we're all good. But yeah, I didn't talk didn't even use uh, fabric pots for the first time growing uh when i met h so definitely uh, a lot <laughs> you of you to, to a whole new world of shit then <laughs> oh yeah. yeah yeah and i'm stubborn too so i always wanted to like do something better than him or try to do it some way nobody else had ever done it and uh not realizing that thousands have come before me and we've figured out a great way to grow maybe not the optimal way because we haven't been able to research it in depth but uh, we're doing pretty good, I think. Yeah, you're like the karate kid, and he's Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I got to bring this back just a little bit. You mentioned this course. I, I saw some people talking about, you know, of course, they don't offer that course in the U.S. That sounds like something that's really, really in-depth. Is that something that's difficult to get into, something like that? Or is that kind of open to everyone in Canada? Because I feel like if they offer something like that in the U.S., it would be very exclusive. Yeah, here in Canada, I mean, uh, there are international students who come to the program. It's right in Niagara Falls, you know, like a, a, a driving here across the border. So anyone from the States is welcome to come to the program as well. You'd have to be physically at the program because there's a, a bunker where you get all the plants with the benches and so on. So there are uh, a lot of classes cool. that you're actually touching the plant, which is super exciting, right? Um, we do such things as uh, genetics. We do tissue culture. We do all sorts of uh, different activities that are really interesting, even learning how the labs test for THC and CBD, like how, how are those things detected? You know, wow. so we learn all of that. And it's really, uh, it's really interesting. A lot of people branch out into different areas of uh, cultivation, you could say, right? Um, and I myself, I think I'm the only one out of my whole class that branched down into home growing, you know, so uh, it was pretty unique in that sense. But in the United States, I would have to assume that there must be some uh, commercial cannabis uh, production program somewhere, uh, especially maybe in the legal states or perhaps because it's not federally legal yet, there's issues with that. Um, so it's a, it's a good question, but it was definitely a, a great experience to learn mostly that you would think like, oh, you go learn how to grow commercially. Everything gets even more complicated, but it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, everything gets a lot simpler and that's 
it was only when I learned what I learned in college that I realized that most of what I had learned on blogs and a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of very old school growing advice, a lot of it was wrong, just plain wrong and uh, just counterproductive to your plants. Commercial growers, they keep everything as simple as possible because if you complicate it, it gets expensive, you know? So um, we went even as uh, far as reverse engineering nutrient lines. So we get these advanced what nutrients the into the lab in the water and then get the results back and then mix our own salts and make the exact same thing after that. You know what I mean? So the, there was a lot of, you yeah. learned that things should be simpler than what uh, what they are out there. You know what I mean? So that's when I was like, wow, I got to create a way for people to grow plants that's easier than what I've learned out there. It took so much time. So uh, today what we have is called the Bud Trainer Method. It's a seven step process from seed to harvest that anybody with a experience or not can follow and just to learn what those basics uh, really are and uh, why they're so important wait so we got to talk about this I, you got the, the butt academy right it's called is that was that what it was the butt trainer method yeah we we called it the big butt academy before but we changed it to the butt trainer method just because okay. it was a method like it's really a method uh, that you uh, used to grow there are multiple variations of it of course but we find that once people grow their plants one time with the butt trainer method then they find their own groove but it's a very robust method that um, gets anybody through from seed to harvest that's an amazing program. And I tell you, because a lot of the people who want to get into growing are, you know, deferred from it because of the fact that it seems like it's fucking complicated. So people are all like, well, fuck this. I can't, I don't want to deal with planting and nutrients and defoliating and all this shit. Like they just want to stick it in the ground and hope for the best, but you're not going to get the best results that way. Like, you know, these plants, it's not like a regular plant. Like they require a lot of TLC, especially depending on what method you're using to growing, what medium you're using, it all depends. You know what I mean? So using stuff like the bud clips and the fabric pots and all that shit really adds up. And now the bud cups are like a whole, whole nother game changer. I've seen people talking about them in the in the chat a lot. These bud cups, because you know, everybody, everybody starts growing the fucking solo cup. Like that's just that's it's if you're not using a pea pot, you're using a fucking solo cup, right? Like that's just the method you use. You growing up, all the old old G's would just put them in solo cups. That was the way to do it. And with the way y'all have created these cups that makes transplanting so much easier because that is the most stressful part about it is taking it from the cup and putting it into the pot. Yeah, that's uh, thank you for uh, the recognition there. It's uh, funny because the butt cups are the first product that are not uh, related to training that we uh, released. And I don't think I ever told the story of how I, I came up with them, uh, which was pretty funny. I was just downstairs um, in my basement, we started transplanting from the red solo cups, and I like threw one in the garbage, and then another one, another one. I don't, I didn't use to reuse my red solo cups because it's really hard to wash them and, and get them clean. Right. So as I was maybe tossing the third one or fourth, and I was like, man, like you know, we are all at Bud Trainer. We're we're about sustainability, and environmentally uh, friendly products. Uh, all of our plastics, they have recycled plastic in it as much as we can put in there, and uh, just. The, the fabric in our pots is recycled as well. Just everything that we can do to help the environment, we we do. And then me tossing these plastic cups was just so wrong. You know, I was just like, man, this is not good. And then I was thinking to myself, like, okay, if if I was to uh, improve this, how would I improve it? And I was looking at it like, well, you can just buy small pots that are like four inch pots that have about the same volume. They already have the holes at the bottom. But then I was thinking like, those are really hard to wash. Like you can never get to the corners. And if there's like, if you have bacteria, if you had an infection on your roots, you can't clean out every single nook and cranny in there. Right. Wow. So it's like, okay, well, what if, you know, the, 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 that process to clean the bottom was made easier then. And that's when I thought that if the bottom was made removable, like the bud cups are, you can at least, you know, I just dropped my bud clips here, but at least you can put your hand in from the bottom and you can wash them like this. So that was where it all started. It was just a cup that you could wash like this, and then you could get the plate and wash that separately as well. So there's no corners. There's nowhere for that bacteria to uh, to stay. And one thing that right. we really learned in college is that if you have your roots infected and you grow another plant in there, they will get infected too, right? So I went and I, I created the design. I I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, so I have a 3D printer. I really like designing. I designed these. 3D printed the first prototypes, which didn't even have the raised bottom here, just have this removable bottom. I put some soil in, started growing my seedling. And then, um, you know, when it was time to, to transplant it, I 
was pulling it out and, and almost like flipping it upside down. And then I just pushed it like, <laughs> with my finger. and I was like, Oh shit, this thing is really, it works really well. You know, it wasn't even, it was kind of like an accidental feature there. And then, um, you know, I, I transplanted that plant and started improving on the design, creating the shape that we have today with better drainage and uh, so on. And we also realized this was an idea that had never been done. So we uh, filed a provisional patent that we're formalizing now. And we decided to just go ahead with the, the launch of this product and see if it was going to work or not. And that's when we launched them on Indiegogo last year, which turned out to be a whole ordeal that uh, we ended up solving in the end. But we got funded and uh, we got, I think, 400 uh, plus or actually 1600 because they come in four packs, cups sold within that first 30 days. And that was enough to get us uh, uh, to start making them with an injection mold, which is why they're so strong and so thick. They hardly... Um, they hardly collapse when you press them with your with your fingers. They're much thicker than any other pot out there and made of a much superior plastic as well. The same plastic that your electronics and your computers are made. This is what we use here. And then you can just throw them in the dishwasher. That's the beauty. Just put the cup on the top rack, this here on the top rack. And I've already done a test with one set where I've washed them over 50 times and no warping, nothing. So 50 grows, it's going to be quite a lot. Uh, for Yeah, people. like any plastic though like make sure it doesn't hit that uh, heater on the bottom but yeah, yeah exactly the the here in the bottom though, might uh, right. cause some problems just like any plastic yeah. like her said so top rack is what's important but yeah that's how the whole idea came to to fruition you know it was uh, uh, trying to solve a cleaning problem and then ended up solving a lot of other problems at the same time that's amazing. Listen, I want to make sure we give the audience a chance to call in, too. If you guys want to call in and ask any questions to Kurt and H while they're here, this, this man's a wealth of fucking knowledge. This is your chance. If you're a home grower, call in. Talk to our guest, 860-384-7110. That is 860-384-7110. We just opened the phone lines. I'll make sure I leave the number on the screen for you guys in case you want to call in. But you guys, with the butt, the butt clips, the butt cups, like, what is – where do you feel like the next innovation is going to come from? Like what's next for bud trainer? Any ideas in the, in the win, anything new coming you got, you're working on, maybe you could give us a little exclusive drop or uh, are the bud cups really the, the big wave right now? Cause it seems like we've had a, a lot of time. requests. We've had a lot of requests for H's apron. So we're, we've been pushing him internally <laughs> to come out with his signature apron. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, so one uh, thing that uh, I can tell you, so we have, I mean, I have a thousand ideas all the time that uh, I want to come up with, but the butt cups were actually, you know, because when we started butt trainer, we already started with the butt clips, the butt pots and the butt huggers all together. So it kind of like they grew with the company, right? But then the butt cups was the first product that we really did a product release. And it's just so much work that you don't think it will be because once you're a mature company, there's just so much more that you have to do versus when you're a company that doesn't exist and you're just starting you just start from scratch everywhere right so right we're still in the process the bud cups are just getting added to our amazon now uh, because again we sold out of that first batch that we made and then i had to make some more so now we're getting them in amazon and then we have to get that working uh, properly and so on the bud clips we just released the black bud clips as well so the bud cups they come in black and yellow that was the first product mm -hmm. we made in a different color because of popular demand you know and then we thought well might as well make the bud clips then in uh, black and yellow so what we uh, are intending to do now they're uh, you could say pretty simple product releases but like curtis said uh doing some merch so right now we have the yellow shirt we're going to be making the gray shirt which is the one that curtis is using now uh the apron which is another item that we're looking at uh perhaps making the butt huggers which are now yellow um into a black version of them as well i thought about making the bud pots into a yellow version but i thought that that would be too much uh service area oh, to kind of cool. bud. So we might make them into a 10 collar or maybe a gray, a light gray, but really just looking at our products and trying to make different versions of them that uh, will appeal to more people. And there is one product that um, I guess I can talk about. Let me see if I find one here. Maybe I don't have them. Uh, oh, yeah, I do have one here. So this year will be our... Um, future grafting tape for people to actually fix their branches with. So if you Holy break shit. it, you can use this tape. Uh, this is an exclusive drop. That. This is shocking me. This is huge right here. This is huge. Clip this. Yeah, well, we, 
we, I, I think we spoke about this a long time ago, maybe a year ago in uh, passing, and now we've been talking more and more about uh, uh, doing this. So we've already got uh, uh, the first batch in. It's really about designing the, the packaging and getting them out there. And uh, it's going to be uh, the, the first crafting tape out there, like really meant to fix uh, branches. So if you break a branch, you just tie that tape around. It doesn't have glue. It's just made of wax. So it's easy because the branches, they just grow in and they break break that tape away and uh, they're great for uh, for really fixing those branches. You have a roll like this will last you a lifetime because there's quite a bit of tape and all you need is a small amount to uh, fix those branches. But uh, that's one, one. Ideally, you're not breaking too many. But right. It's, exactly. It's a great exactly option. What I said at the top of the interview, though, is that my main, my main thing about me that I'm worried about trying this method is the fact that I know my clumsy ass is going to break shit. And I that's what scares me the most. And the fact that we have this exclusive drop with the tape right here is huge. It's huge news. Well, what's beautiful about these plants is like a break's not the end of the world. It sounds like you don't even top your plants, right? So like we'll we'll top them and do all this stuff. And even if you do break them, if you save it, that thing knuckles up and it's huge. It comes back stronger than ever, like a broken bone, right? And yeah. if not, the plant just redistributes the energy and makes bigger buds on the surrounding branches. So it's a win-win. I love that the the, the, the the chat is coming up with all kinds of innovative ideas for y'all. Listen, call in, let them know, 860-384-7110. That's 860-384-7110. I've seen bigger bud cuffs, which one of them that came out, someone asked for a one-gallon bud cup which was a whole new thing I'd seen. Um, another one I saw was uh, a watering base with holes for you to tie branches down. Bang, bang, bang. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, watering base is definitely something that needs improvement out there because you have to get that tray, put the watering base, or sorry, like the, the planter plus the watering base on top, plus your pot on top of it. So that's definitely something that needs some improvement out there. Don't give them too many ideas, guys. I don't want to have to be pulling all nighters getting these products right. <laughs> you're gonna be coming up with designs and all kinds of marketing shit to the matter of a minute after this i really like the idea of the larger cups too i mean that could be a game changer a lot of people might you know they they, they might start in a bigger pot or prefer something bigger they don't want they want to let you know leave it alone for a little longer before they transplant it so they might need a bigger medium than just a cup a solo cup and that's actually a great idea i think <laughs> yeah for sure well the thing that i find is um with red solo cups right uh, it's kind of risky to pull the plant from the stem because you can just break it through and then you know there goes your plant whereas with a one gallon pot your plant will be probably pretty strong at that point that you can probably pick it up and you know lift it off the pot whereas where i really saw the uh the difference with the seedlings was by being able to push them from the bottom at least you're not risking ripping those roots off you know right which is important. You don't want that's the last thing you want to do because once you destroy that, your plan, you, you know, you're going to have a rough time after that going forward. So I just want to say this is great. I love this. I'm an ideas guy. <laughs> Everyone's got yeah. some ideas for you. <laughs> Send them all. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say at the top of the hour, like this, your product, amazing. Your following, very loyal. I, lo I love to see the bud trainers getting a recognition y'all get. And I love seeing it in my local shops. That's fucking awesome to me. Because I didn't realize how accessible it was outside of the website, which, by the way, in case y'all were wondering, make sure you check it out, www.budtrainer.com. Also, you can check them out on IG, at Bud Trainer, and uh, follow them. They go live, what, Fridays? That's right. Yes, sir. Come on Friday at 4 p.m., YouTube, and uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Y'all were amazing. Thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with us tonight. I appreciate your time. We wish you nothing but success. I got to talk to you soon because I got to place an order. So I'm going to need some stuff because my tent is about to get ready and get started. And I want to try this, but I might need a little tape. <laughs> amazing. No, that sounds great. Of we'll, course, we'll someone wants to call it. now. Of course, somebody wants to call now. It's you want to take the call or no? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, to me, Blood, what's your name? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Ontario. Ontario. What's uh, your name? That's, I, I know that voice. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is uh, Mike. Michael. And, and <laughs> I, have a, I have a problem with my plants, and I was looking for some help. Okay, Michael. <laughs> <laughs>
Like, how high guy. are you right now is what I want to know, because I can I, see I, you laughing yourself in the background. Pretty high, and my <laughs> wife killed my plants, and I, I'm going to cry. Oh, my gosh. What? She, she said she watered them, and she didn't water them, or she didn't water them enough. And in Ontario, it's been 40 this week, and um, I've been trying to water my bud trainer pots from the bottom, trying to get them to soak them up, and uh, I think it's going to be touch or go here. <laughs> Are you talking about your outdoors? Yeah, the 25 Oh, gallon. no. Should I just spritz them, or should I just water them and soak them? Damn, that's sad news. It's bad. Uh, I mean, our condolences if if they got to the point where they crisped up. However, in a a plant that big might have enough water stored inside of it that you might just lose the fringes of the plant. Like if you gave it a soak now, you're just going to be patient and wait and pray a little bit. Maybe we'll all pray for you tonight. (laughs) The thing about about Mike is he grows plants so big that the – they just drink and drink and drink. So, Mike, we got to get you to flip flip the flower a little bit earlier. I know outdoors you don't have much control, but that's tough, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's divorce in the future for us, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask, how's the relationship with your wife right now? <laughs> she, she left to pick up my daughter, so okay. we, we, we were arguing pretty good. That's so, what she says. Uh, she, said she watered them. I think she's lying. Her, her her garden and cucumbers and everything looks great except for my plants. And she said my plants, and she put emphasis See, on that. See, what are so the I chances think... that all her stuff's fine and your plants are dying? Yep, that's about the gist of it. So, R.I.P. Uh, any any suggestions would help, guys. Any anything. I mean, just yeah. More yeah, than... I think you you've done it all there. Uh, it, yeah, just putting that water in. Well, so I'm talking to my wife, guys. Oh, oh like, shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, no nutrients in the water, just just plain water. Because I mean, it sounds like you're far really too gone. Offer, but... Then you got to put something in the water, man. If you want to take care of that life problem of yours, <laughs> I don't suggest yeah. that. You hear that? I... From me. <laughs> yeah. If I'm not here tomorrow either, tell them to check my water because I think she's gonna do it to me. I think maybe. Now she owes you half of the GGC prize that she's gonna win. So. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for taking my call, and thanks for keeping me in your prayers. I really appreciate it. Mike, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right. (laughs) Try that again. (laughs) Poor Mike, man. (laughs) He's in a world of hurt right now, I can just tell. Well, man, it's a sad day when your plants die out of uh, thirst. Kurt had a day like that not too long ago. Kurt, your wife came back from cannabis. Oh, that was on me, though. I was a rookie grower. Still consider myself somewhat rookie. Well, me too, man. It's all right. It's okay. We're all gonna. None of us can be like H right now, you know. The man with all. I'm not willing to go to school. He's the Jedi. We're the we're Padawans, whatever they were. How that works. (laughs) Yeah. Listen, I appreciate y'all again. Make sure y'all check out Bud Trainer on Instagram. Check out the website, www.budtrainer.com. H, I know you got to leave. Kurt, H, we really appreciate y'all coming on. Make sure y'all get yourself some Bud Trainer products right now. Go on the website. Do a little shopping. You know you're stoned right now. You know you're high right now. Jesus Christ, go shopping. Hit up budtrainer.com. Kurt, H, y'all have a good night. Appreciate y'all. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much Thank for you. having us. Have a great one. You too. Thank <laughs> you.